story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Glad to have you join us again on Call TV News Hour. I'm Frank Omalape. Scores of students have been reportedly queued and several others wounded when an explosion occurred at the Comprehensive Secondary School, Portis School in Yoba State. The device was said to have exploded early morning today as a student lined up for the Eugene Morning Assembly. The Nigeria Police Public Relations Office in Manila Juku has confirmed the blast at Government Secondary School, Portisco. A coalition of election observers has expressed concerns of the HE's notice during the ongoing distribution of permanent voter cards in 12 states. It's also worried that the Independent National Electoral Commission has been silent in the face of complaints over the exercise. The Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room said in a statement that several registered voters have either been turned back in many states or found that INEC officials did not show up. It added that in states like Hano, Ogo, and Plateau, there are fewer cars than the number of voters who showed up for their voter cars. The group also noted that inadequate information from INEC officials have heightened fees of disenfranchisement and confusion. It therefore wants the Commission to take urgent steps to rectify the situation. The why the Independent National Electoral Commission has denied suggesting that some registered persons have been delisted from the voter register. It also insists that all pro re properly registered voters will get their permanent voter cards before the 2015 general elections. An ex-spokesman, Kyle Dato, will describe what it's been experienced in some states as temporary challenges, which the Commission is making effort to resolve. Of the alleged loss of records of 1.4 million voters in Lagos State, INEC acknowledged that it had 6.1 million voters on its registers at 2011, but noted that 82,892 of that figure have since been found to be multiple registrants. It added that there was loss of data and incomplete data affecting about 1 million records, mostly in 1,792 polling units that were identified and had since been made public before the present exercise. INEC insists that it is not a conspiracy as claimed by some notable figures in the state and disclosed that the problem will be rectified through the continuous voter register exercise from November 12 to 17. Now, in spite of the zoning arrangement laid down by the People's Democratic Party in Adama State, Governor Balangelari is keen on testing his popularity at the party primaries. He made his, his position known to journalists in Abuja shortly after returning the nomination form that was picked on his behalf by his supporters. The PDP had zoned the governorship to Adamawa Central, but the governor, who is from Adamawa North, is not by that. I have made substantial contributions. There are things you do, you don't begin to say it to the world. It's not about pleasing the world. We are on it. It's an ongoing process. It's not a one-day process. It's ongoing, and I can assure you, we are doing our best. We have our own internal mechanisms to resolve things. But I think, believe me, this is a no issue. This is a foregone issue, as far as I know. You know, but should there be anything? You know, we have internal mechanisms to resolve our disputes. If we get to the bridge, will cross but I, I've already I, I'm aware that we have already crossed the bridge on this matter former vice president of Nigeria and presidential hopeful under the all progressive Congress Atiku Abubakaro has second his wife how the politics of stomach infrastructure has practiced by the PDP as speaking in Iraq Atiku would describe Nigeria as a sick nation says priority should be placed on infrastructural development instead of stomach infrastructure as a promise, free education at all levels, he voted into power as president. Our correspondent, Rashi Rashidu, 
has the details in this report presented from our studios. In at the commissioning of a health care facility at Irekiti, Nekiti State, the former vice president makes case for what he describes as infrastructure development over stomach infrastructure. Certainly Nigeria is not healthy. I mean, uh, whether economically, whether, you know, uh, security-wise, so, I mean, certainly Nigeria is not healthy. What can be done to salvage? The only thing that can be done to salvage is Nigerians now have an opportunity to bring about change. And they should seize the opportunity and bring about the change by voting in. That he has benefited immensely from Nigeria from his free education at all levels, he voted into power as president come 2015. Nigeria has done everything for me. But for free education, I will not be what I am today. But for free education, I will not have been vice president. But for free education, you will not even see me here. Atiku has been very critical of the good luck Jonathan administration did not spare the nation's health sector as it took another run on the state of the nation. And I believe the people of this state, Ekiti, surely you don't need stomach infrastructure. Yeah. I want to ask you two questions. Observers are keenly watching now the likes of Atiku, who has been accused in some quarters of contributing largely to the problem facing Nigeria, will fare come 2015. Meanwhile, a call has been made to government at all levels and politicians alike to save the Nigerian health sector from imminent collapse. This was made by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, who led other federal lawmakers to Irekiti in Ekiti State, where one of their own bimbo, Daramala, had his third account of stewardship to the people with the donation of a 32-bed ultra modern hospital for his constituency. Here again is Rashid's report presented from our studios. But with the larger concentration of Nigerians dwelling in the rural areas, access to basic health care and facilities have been a major problem. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, while commissioning a 32-bed ultra-modern hospital built by another member of the House, Bimbo Adaramola, as a mark of his third annual account of stewardship, admonished governments at all levels to place top priority on the nation's health care sector and describe the hospital project as a laudable initiative. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very, very impressive investment in the healthcare system of this federal constituency of Ekiti State and of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I commend him for this initiative. The donor of the hospital, however, choose to speak on what informed the project. I have a personal choice and commitment to Almighty God that I will give an account of every authority God has given to me. Every authority comes with responsibility. God gave me the opportunity to represent these people. And I must be able to account for the time that I've had authority. And that's what we've been able to do with this story. Another member of the lower house, Bami Dele Fakparusi, laments the inability of politicians to embark on people-oriented projects and called for a change of attitude. The, our healthcare system uh, still needs a lot of investment. And this is part of the investment we are talking about. Having this facility in local environment like this uh, is a lesson uh, for all politicians. Uh, it's not, you know, politicians are used to building hotels. Um, uh, less of us, I want to categorize myself among them, uh, think in this line that there is need for investment in our healthcare system. The politic in motivating the hospital donation, according to some political observers, is what Daramola may not have told the people as reason behind the project at this time, especially ahead of the 2015 elections. But for others, it is better late than never. 
You're still watching Court TV News on the hour. We'll take a break shortly. We're back with more. Do join us again. I've been foreseeing it as a form of jamboree. It's a normal thing we have been experiencing it in the past. If you look at the Obasanjo regime, they did the same. But what, what's the outcome of it? We cannot do without our health. If it's necessary, we should do it. When they are a small child, your children, they, they went to a free school, this year. But now, why? Why? They cannot put the money up like that. The idea of making laws, chopping money over there, you are sending somebody to another area to go and fry the people around. Is it possible? Because it's their work they receive. Try and know their problem, what they really want in this country, and settle them. At this particular period in time, because it will not pay the government. You can't bring it to Nigeria. Nigeria, they know, the, they know their way out. If they, you know, telling people, say, oh, can't do this, can't do this, they will follow. Because the people that we have on ground, what are they actually doing? This man, uh, 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 decided before, making notas go. Make Isas stay. Yeah. You women are bringing the problem. Women are wearing trousers. The tournament said that no woman should wear woman's shirt. No man should wear women's shirt. He said God is annoyed. The people only on Call TV News. For more information on our news and other programs, visit our Facebook page. It's facebook.com or slash TV News. And our Twitter handle at OTV News NG. You can also log on to www.youtube.com for slash OTV TV space the news. Tax experts have blamed poor practice of taxation in Nigeria and inadequate education about its importance and the mismanagement of tax funds. According to two key practitioners in the industry, revenue generated from tax can sustain Nigeria like or revenue is properly managed. Our correspondent Omotayo Alo tells us more. With dwindling revenue generation to sustain developmental works in the country, adequate payment of tax appears to be the solution. The Vice President, Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, Tedru Shomori, says tax laws are too complex and shield Nigerians from compliance. It can also translate some of the tax laws because the people that are selling the informal sector <clears throat> Many of them they cannot read, so maybe we need to try you know, to translate some of those laws into vernacular, Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa. You know, make it very easy for them. But the awareness must be there. Then the tax money should be well spent. Putting the compliance level of Nigerians to tax payments at 30 percent with hope of an improvement. Past President Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, Razak Kadri, says government should be more trustworthy in maximizing taxpayers' money. The major problem that we have in the tax system right now is the fact that people tend to you know, bring up tax issues without having cognizance of the fact that it has to pass through uh, the, uh, the assembly, National Assembly and State Assembly. And even in the case of the local government, it still has to pass through the local, I mean, the, um, uh, the state assembly. But what we find out is that people start um, bringing out uh, tax laws just maybe from their bedroom or whatever. And unfortunately, Nigeria finds it difficult to even take these people to court. We, are, we need to really start asking for our rights. Once we start that, then I think um, we'll just be paying what we're not supposed to actually pay for. Stating the readiness of the Society of Women in Taxation to disseminate adequate tax education. The national chairperson of the society, Dina Rose Ajayi, is of the view that culture of tax payments can be improved if the government gives its citizen enough reason to be committed. We in, in Swiss, as women, we are nation builders, we are home builders. We need, we hope to take this back to our houses and beyond to ensure that the culture of paying tax like you have in other advanced countries is already something we we imbibe with, not something we are forced to do. If you do not empower people, you cannot talk about improvement in revenue. So these are the objectives of that to also help in empowering people, particularly the less privileged, the downtrodden in the society, the vulnerable ones in the society. 
they are asked is to touch their life through education and through empowerment. The experts believe that the current slump in global oil price is a warning sign that there is need for government to take taxation seriously while shifting away from over-reliance on oil. Omota Yualo, Core TV News, Lagos. Having been elected as a full member of the World Federation of Exchanges, WFE, the Council members of the Nigerian Stock Exchange has expressed optimism that the NSC will be the largest stock exchange in Africa. The president of the NSC, Boji Aiki Mokwede, who says that Nigeria will stand with the developed world, having gone through the journey for 14 years, is proud that the benefit of being a member of the WFE will enable foreign and private investors to invest and thrive in an enabling environment. It confirms the Nigerian Stock Exchange conformity to very high international standards, which of course you know is a precondition for attracting foreign investment, particularly foreign institutional portfolio managers. World Federation of Exchange Member Exchanges are tasked with, with subscribing to the World Federation of Exchanges qualifying characteristics, which detail the standards that members should adhere to. In other words, they demand a stronger regulatory environment, and by regulation, we speak not just about extant regulation, but also self-regulation. In other words, the degree and extent to which the members of the exchange, market participants, conduct themselves. And therefore, we are subscribing to World Federation of Exchange Standards, not domestic standards per se. Full membership, of course, gives us access to international portfolio flows that filter through WFP members. And of course, we think internally that it validates the transformation programs that have been pursued by the exchange since 2011, and it validates the leadership of the Nigerian government, particularly as it relates to an enabling environment and a supportive environment for the private sector to thrive. The NSC is the third African stock exchange to be granted full Federation membership status. The WFE's vote for full membership came through a series of assessment. This membership status reflects the exchange's commitment to implementing the highest standard of international best practices. You're still watching Court TV News Hour. We'll take another break now. We'll be back with sport and more outside Nigeria. Do join us again. Hello and welcome to Health Issues. This is Call TV News Health Program. Congenital disorder affecting the orofacial region. Just solely in this category, bacteria hepatitis. Feeding is a natural way of a mother. This is a program that takes an in-depth look at health challenges. Faced by humans in our society. Health issues only on Call TV News. In sports now, Super Eagles midfield Jem Ogeni Onazi has set his sights on victory in Congo over the host in next weekend's Nations Cup qualifier, but has stated that there are conditions to be met if victory must come Nigeria's ways next Saturday. Nazi, who was expected in Nigeria on Sunday night, said Nigeria's desirous of the nation's cup ticket must all join hands and pray that the football community must be united to achieve success. Preparations for the make or break Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Congo Brazzaville in Pontinua is expected to be kick started on Monday following the arrival of invited Nigerian League stars to Abuja on Saturday after a highly impressive 1 0 win on over Ghana in the Maiden Restoration Cup at the ultra-modern Aquibom International Stadium last Friday. The players who came into camp with head coach Stephen Kershi, his assistants and other members of the staff of the national team are goalkeeper Chigoze Agbim, Wari Wolves keeper Zubike Gwekwe, Solomon Kwame, scorer of the epoch making a goal in Rio, Emem Udok, Nasara United's Tony Jomare, Christian Osago Naigo Dalo, 
Agbola Hon Salami, and new Koma Kingsley Sokari. As predicted by many, exciting Enyba International midfielder Kingsley Sokari, alias uh, Obi or Bobby, has broken into Super Eagles squad for the two remaining qualifiers against Congo and South Africa next week. Before now, assistant coach Dan Dibul Amokaji had said the player is as exciting as former Super Eagles keeper Austin J.J. Okocha, a view also heard by his other assistants. Last Friday at the Uyo International Stadium inauguration game against the Black Metros of Ghana, Keshi had the first-hand opportunity to assess the player, and his final verdict was that he is excellent and good enough for the man on main national team. He subsequently ordered him on the plane to Abuja for the remaining two games. Bobby is presently at the boat in white apartment with the rest of the stars from the Nigerian League. Outside Nigeria now, the last two Americans serving lengthy prison sentences in North Korea have arrived in the U.S. after uh, the Asia-Pacific nation freed them following a secret mission by the U.S. intelligence chief James Clapper. Kenneth and, uh, Bayer and Matthew Miller arrived around uh, 5 GMT uh, on Sunday at Joint Base Lewis McGold in Washington State. By disembarked the plane with a suitcase, then smiled at he hug and embraced family and friends, followed by Miller, who was also greeted by family members. Bayer and Miller had both been sentenced to several years of hard labor for crimes against North Korea. U.S. President Barack Obama said on Saturday he was grateful for North Korea's decision to release the two Americans. Well, and that's a wrap on Court TV News at this time. And thanks for watching. I am Frank Malape. I'll see you again.